views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello there. Welcome. You are listening to the Cornelia Stephanie show. I'm Cornelia Stephanie, your host. And I'm so excited for today's show. Today's show is with a Hollywood stuntman, a former U.S. Marine, and we're going to talk about courage, healing, and empowerment. Welcome to the show, Steve Chang. Hey, Cornelia. It's my honor to be here with you. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity. It's great to be able to connect with you in this way today. Isn't it awesome? Because you and I, We've, we've never met in person. Isn't that interesting? We've never met in person, but you and I have done a lot of work together. And um, you've allowed me into your world to see parts of your soul, to see your soul. And we've done, we've done amazing inner work together. That's why this show today I was overcome with emotion before we began. I could I I wanted to start crying because of who you are and the work that we've done and uh where you were. We're gonna we're gonna talk about some of those 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 places today because that what we have all had to face some of the darkest parts of ourselves, the the dark parts of our soul for for the deep inner healing to take place. And a lot of people out there right now are also going through the dark night of the soul. And with the work that I do, and of course with the work that you do, because we're going to tell people about what you do, with the work that I do, I empower people to step into their truest, authentic, organic nature, their, their real self, so that they can then bring and share their gifts with the world. The, the journey that you and I went through together was, was uh, deeply as transformative as it was for you. It was like that for me, too, because someone has to be vulnerable. Someone has to be in the vulnerable position that when 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 there's uh, an exchange that takes place between a coach and a person and between a coach and the client or whoever the person is and someone has to be the vulnerable person to be able to to be willing to be held to be willing to be led to be willing to 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 shine the light and and you were that person and and during a time where you you had you had some real challenges and so now you are this you you've stepped into your true authentic self and you're living a life that I can't wait to eat, to find out about how this all came to be being in hollywood being a stunt man and where your life is today but first i want to read um i want to read this i want to read this and then i'm going to take my glasses off As a Hollywood stuntman, entrepreneur, and former U.S. Marine, Steve has overcome situations that most people would find terrifying. But the scariest thing that 
he's ever done was to face his own fears and his own demons. This journey takes huge courage and radical self-honesty. If you're looking to become the hero of your life's story, Steve is uniquely qualified in taking you through the journey, encouraging and energizing. He is a spiritual warrior and an invaluable guide in your quest to illuminating the dark, disempowering force within. This is the path to courage and deeply rooted inner confidence that enhances your life forever. And part of the reason why I'm so overwhelmed with emotion to have you on today is because you are the new heroic masculine. And the fact that you're in Hollywood right now, being a stuntman, being the new heroic masculine, not the wounded one, not the wounded one from the past, but being the new one. The, the, because we're also going to be talking about redefining the, the redefined masculine and, and what that looks like. Because you have that balanced expression now with being able to have your feminine side, your emotional parts healed, and your masculine expression and your um, expressing yourself from a balanced place. So looking forward to having this discussion with you. Thank you so much for saying yes to this interview with me. You know, it's it's such an honor. Let's go right into where where we began. Where we began. How does that sound? That sounds great. Um, I can feel the your energy and the emotion. Um, this seeing you today brings me back. I think recalling how we connected um, was pretty interesting because the the space I was in then was. Uh, that of despair, really. I, w- I was I was pretty hopeless at that point. And my wife actually discovered you somehow. And I remember she was working with you and she was so amazed uh, by your by just your energy. And so she really encouraged me to, you know, work with you as well. And uh, I remember I, I had so much resistance at that time because I didn't know how to ask for help. It was, you know... Um, it, it, it's pretty hard. It, it sounds so simple. Yeah, go ask for help and stuff. But uh, especially as a guy, I think um, someone who has really overcompensated the masculine um, his whole life, you know, as, as, as a child, I didn't really understand what it was like to ask for help. I didn't even know what was going on. So I didn't know what to ask for. And working with you um, was profoundly different because I had actually worked with other coaches before. I had even um, participated in a coaching certification program um, only because of I wanted to do my own inner work, not because I wanted to get certified per se. Uh, however, that's the way to dive in. And I didn't get nearly as much from that program as I did from you, although I learned so many technical things. What you provided me, Cornelia, was this non judgmental, loving, like truly loving space. And although you said all these nice things about me as far as being courageous and stuff, it was really you that provided that space. And it's so valuable. I had no idea how powerful just holding space for someone is to allow that healing to occur because I was so stuck in my mind, Um, you know, reading books, attending seminars, getting coaching about how to, you know, uh, attack this, this fear and, and self-doubt from a logical point of view, you know, behavioral changes, attitude, all that stuff. But it's actually the, the feminine energy that, that you really helped me understand and embrace that does the healing. And I was so imbalanced with that masculine feminine. I didn't, I didn't even understand like um, how to, how to, you know, let go of that resistance. I remember one session you were talking to me about having so much resistance. I was like, no, not, what do you mean? No, I, I, I didn't even know I was doing it. I didn't know I was resisting and, and blocking that. And I think it was a, really a self-protection mechanism to, you know, in order to um, kind of, yeah, protect myself because being vulnerable takes huge courage. And although I, I did all these, you know, masculine things my whole life, um, this was totally different. And it's a different kind of courage. And so thank you for helping me through that. And um, especially at a time in my life when I was, I was in a pretty dark place. Um, 
And what's happened since then has just been incredible. So uh, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited. Oh my gosh, Steve, just hearing you talk, you know, here's the thing about you is you're so amazing. You're so brilliant. You're so highly skilled at so many things that it's ridiculous. You know, there isn't anything like you could be, you are an entrepreneur, you are a, a, a coach, you are a seminar leader, you can put packages together, you're a Hollywood stuntman, you're an amazing writer, you are a balanced expression of the masculine and feminine, you're totally in your core, you're totally in your power, you're totally in your heart, you're vulnerable, There, it's just, you're just so juicy, just so awesome, and I just love, I love that we had that time together, that we did that work, you know, it just, and it was, and again, because I remember you saying that you remember the resistance piece. You know, what I remember is the self-hate, mm-hmm. the not loving the self. Yep. And that, that took a while. That took a while to, to peel that, to peel those layers off, to peel those layers off. But the beautiful thing about you is, and this is this is this is also about your wife. I want to say this about your wife. She has always seen your soul and has always uh, held that space for you, also, right? Because she she really has she has known this about you. And even though, and that that's the gift of the feminine is that that we we hold the space. For the masculine, since we're talking about the masculine and feminine, the, that's part of that that we do for each other, as 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 awakened beings, right? And that's why it doesn't matter whether you are masculine or feminine, because you're the first man now that I'm having on my show. Wow! So first, first man, and I love it that it's you. Cool. And you said yes, and so that's so cool. Because you also embody the principles. You embody the principles of emotional well-being. You call it emotional fitness. I call it emotionally wealthy, but it's all the same thing. And that's one of the main pieces that we have to to get is the emotional health and the emotional well-being. And I, I think that's that was our big work together because you already had a lot of the uh, the other concepts down, you already, you already knew that, but that was the place where we did that deep, deep inner, the lower emotional core wounding, uh, unworthiness, being victimized, feeling victimized, um, s- self hate. Mm-hmm. These are, these are all, these were all, um, core woundings from the past, from our conditioning, right? From our conditioning of, what we've had to overcome. And so there was a lot of those things, but your wife, she was, she was one that has seen that in you, that has seen the gifts, that has seen your true soul. And that's one of the things that I'm gifted at also. I'm able to see people's soul if they allow me, if they allow me, because they have to give permission to allow you in. And you allowed me in. And that right there was where the healing can then take place. And then all the dark places that then revealed themselves during our work together, during our sessions, uh, it it is, is of no judgment. It didn't matter what you did. It didn't matter uh, what, what you've done, what you think you've done. It didn't matter what lifetime ago it was. It, it didn't matter because the only thing that mattered is that we were going to bring love to to everything that's what we were going to do and so i had to hold the space for you to see that that's how we're going to do it right yeah and 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 then that's how we did it and it was amazing because it took we were together i think about six months something like that and then after the six months um Periodically, I would get a phone call from you and we would work a little bit more, but it became less and less and less because really that's what we want. We want for people to become self-empowered 
to become self healers to uh, to not look outside of themselves for for help but at a time that that all takes it all takes time and so now here we are today and you are in a in a in a much different place and i can't wait to hear more about where, what you're doing in your life now and how that that has all changed but i want to talk more about the dark night of the soul and so about some of the conditioning so can you can you take it back tell us isn't it interesting what happens when the healing takes place and the love takes place and all of that, when we look back, it's it's hard to remember even sometimes, isn't it? Absolutely. Like life is so great that it's almost like you were re reborn again into another incarnation. And here we are with an, an entirely new life. And then occasionally some of some old things, subtle programs come up for release, for healing, for surrender and for let go. And wouldn't you agree that uh, it's it's just like a, a whole new life? Uh, definitely, it, it does seem like such a lifetime ago uh, being in that that the dark space. However, I I'd also add that I can still remember, um, you know, what it was like and the feelings, and I think it's important to to remember where we came from, um, and because it helps, it helped me, it continues to help me understand uh, others and continue to just really understand myself better. This whole journey of life is really uh, about knowing yourself. And I continue to do that. And thanks to the work that we've done together, uncovering those and healing those emotional wounds, which are at the core of everything. I mean, we can, we can get as much intellectual training as, as, you know, it's infinite. There's so much information out there. So it's not about information. It's not about more, more, more. It's, it's about getting to the core and clearing that. And um, I'm so grateful for you. And yeah, absolutely. My wife is has been this hero in my life as well, being able to um, you know hold that space for me. She's incredibly powerful and and loving to do that. Um, and there's there's so much that uh, that I uh, that I that I feel right now. Um, I'm not even sure where to start. But um, yeah, I would I would say that doing this work, this this work in the feminine um is really essential uh you know especially for men and i see it more and more now with you know the millennials seem to be more open um in that sense as well but for my personal journey um yeah i, th I think understanding why i was um, hurt was important however i think it's not essential um i used to think that i need to understand why i'm like this and you know get my head around it but now um i'm really feeling that actually it we don't need to go back there we don't need to dwell there at all it's all about okay just letting that emotion and all that stuff release in, in order to really embody the 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 self that we want to be um so i spent a lot of years trying trying to you know analyze why i was it this way or that way or you know how I was victimized or whatever, but at the end of the day, um, that is not the focus really. It's, it's really more about getting to the core of, uh, what our hurts are. And what I realized is that things that I used to resist a lot, um, things that used to emotionally trigger me, make me angry, scared, whatever, I've learned to embrace those things. And this was a huge shift for me because whenever um, I'd have a, a, a big fight with my wife or whenever I'd have something come up in me um, that was triggered by someone else or circumstance, it, it became okay. Now it was this whole self-realization, okay, of like, what is this really about? You know, what, you know, what is this trigger? And instead of going, okay, why am I like this? Whatever it is, about, it was more like, okay, this, this, you know, what I call a test situation has just shown me something and there's something that needs to be revealed there. So through the work that we've done, I've understood, I understand more how to process these emotions. Yes. And so these are huge because now pretty much on the spot when something happens where I'm like totally emotionally triggered, I can, I can kind of like uh, shift away from that victim mode and go and take more of like a step back from the observer point of view and go, okay, what's this really about? And then instead of, you know, blaming, judging an outside situation or person, I'm now able to go inside and be like, okay, there's obviously something in me that hasn't been cleared yet. Right. And, and I can go do that work 
and do that emotional processing that, that, you know, you've, you've showed me and be able to clear that. And, and then those test situations now become this huge gift. Those emotional triggers become, become this potential for a huge breakthrough. And uh, what I mean by test situation is that, you know, uh, again, all of the, the programs and things that I've, I've gone through before, it's like we can consciously be aware of what we should do or, or things like that. Like any person, you know, when things are great can be like a good person. But under those what I call test situations where we're emotionally triggered, how do we respond then? You know, it, you know, we, we often have this reflexive, you know, just kind of reaction to something. And then back, and then we look back later and go, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Or, you know, what happened that I did something really bad, but I'm actually a good person, that kind of thing. And um, those test situations reveal how we're operating at a subconscious level. And they also um, show us where we need to do some digging, where we need to actually go and do that inner work. So I've, I've learned to appreciate these uh, test situations and, and really um, look at them as like, kind of like signposts as, okay, there's something there to do and there's some work to do. Um, at the same time, it's not like we go looking for those situations either because that becomes, we, we start to focus on those and they, they, they can pop up all over the place. So it's not about searching for those because, you know, that is, then we actually can, can create them. It's about when they occur and happen. Um, not resisting them and allowing that to happen, even though as painful or as defensive as it may feel. And that's where the courage comes in, being vulnerable, being open and being real and then, and then going there and doing that work. So I think that was one of the many uh, shifts in my own perception, how I frame things that are going on a lot in my life. And so Lisa and I, for example, my wife, we, we, I think, I don't know how many years ago, before we really started doing work, whenever we would have like this big, fight or something as you know married couples do we we actually would high five each other in the middle of it and celebrate and this is a weird shift but it became a great pattern interrupt because then it was like okay we know something good is going to come down the line as long as we have the courage to go through this and not give up even no matter how hard it gets and every single time 100 percent of the time that's been true we've we've uh, we have a breakthrough things get better um it's just amazing and but again it's not easy However, having the tools and resources to understand what's happening gives us the, um, I would say, the, the power and the understanding at a, at a mental game to be like, okay, I know what's going on here. We can go through this. Let's work it out. So it's, it's been great. So that's awesome because it's, it's helped you in your, in your marriage. It's helped you navigate the waters, uh, the emotional waters of the world. It's helped you in so, it's in so many ways. Steve, tell us about how you used to, and tell us about how you used to feel about yourself. Because prior to uh, that work, and now you being able to do this work with Lisa and the way that you guys move through it all, and 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 how it's helped your marriage and everything. At the root, though, if if you, you if you were still feeling terrible about yourself, I, I think that's what what I want to talk about is how how important that that work was to get you to feel good about yourself, to get you to feel empowered about yourself, to get you to feel better about yourself so that you can then work with your partner in your marriage and make that better and bring more of an empowered person to the relationship. So, but tell us about how you used to feel about yourself from, from your conditioning, you know, I, I remember cultural conditioning was a big deal for you. Yeah. You want to on that with us? Yeah, this is a big topic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I think as far as, you know, how I felt about myself, you, you mentioned the, you know, the self-hate piece and that was a big part. And that, that was something that um, I think I didn't even realize for quite a while, at the end of the day, um, I I felt unworthy, um, not good enough, and yeah, it came from parental, social, cultural conditioning, um, and now it, whatever th that doesn't really matter. Um, but I think because I felt that way, um, that's where the overcompensating of the masculine came in at a very young age. 
Uh, okay, let me let me go back to nine years old. This is an important time for me. Nine years old, I remember having some friends over, and I was in my room, and I looked in the mirror, and I saw this this face, this Asian face, and I was like, um, I felt. I remember the emotion I felt. I didn't even think about the words, but I felt disappointment, like deep disappointment, and I was like, I don't want to be that person. Um, and I think that's where the self-hate really showed itself for the first time. And right around that age, uh, you know, I started training martial arts. Um, the, the friends I would choose in school, they were all, you know, white, <laughs> athletic, you know, cool people, whatever. Um, I actually avoided other Asian, you know, people in school. And I, um, yeah, so... You know, fast forward a little bit, I, I, I trained martial arts. Um, I became a, a U.S. Marine uh, in, in the infantry. <laughs> and I, you know, became a stuntman, started my own businesses. All these things that I did to feel better about myself because I felt so horrible about myself. So everything I did was really about proving to myself, you're good enough, you're good enough. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I wasn't. I, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of accomplishments I did, what kind of, you know, uh, I used to work out a lot, you know, and all of these things just so I felt confident at the end of the day. It was really about that self-confident feeling um, powerful. And I, I, I built a tougher, tougher shell around me. And on my 30th birthday, something happened um, where that shell broke. And the more rigid something is, uh, the, the more it can crack. Right. Because it's not flexible. And, and, and um, yeah, uh, throughout my life, my adult life, I, I had a lot of stages of depression, um, but I was still very functional because I had to put on that tough social mask. So. Um, I, but I still felt this, you know, unworthiness and, and being not good enough. And it didn't matter you know, what I was able to accomplish or, or anything. It, it, it was this looming feeling inside of me. And I always had that feeling of emptiness that I tried to fill, I, you know, whatever that, that, that void was always there. And I fill it with, again, um, you know, credentials or accomplishments or whatever, uh, superficial things I could. And until that year we worked together and, uh, some other work that I did, I realized that it wasn't really emptiness. It was actually a disconnection from my soul. It's a disconnection to myself. And it was because I had that unworthiness, um, piece uh, of not basically liking myself at all, or, or even worse. Yeah, it was a version of self-hate for sure. And um, I would sabotage everything in my life. It didn't matter what it was, whether if it was relationships, it was career, health. Um, it all started to fall apart. And anyway, I think it was because subconsciously uh, I was, you know, I had these patterns of just self-destruction as a way of weird, like a weird way of punishing myself for not being good enough yet, you know? So it's like, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve that. So um, my inner talk was horrible. You know, that little inner voice, that inner critic was horrible. And I listened to it, but then I didn't even realize, right? Um, you would make decisions on it. Sorry? You would make decisions on the listening to the inner voice. That's right. It, it ran my life. And inner critic. Was, that's right. And um, every, so that all the decisions I made were based on fear, were based on getting the approval of others. And... And I was deeply unhappy. Like I said, there's that, that, that void that just getting big, kept getting bigger because I was so disconnected to myself. Um, uh, and shortly after, maybe, I don't know, a year or so after working with you, I, I was in a situation where I had taken this um, job opportunity because it sounded good, but inside I didn't want to do it. But I, I was kind of a little bit pressured into doing it or whatever. And it was so stressful and horrible <laughs> that I physically got sick and my health was affected. And after several months of, of this work, I was like, what am I doing? This is so not me. So I decided to, you know, uh, again, I was, I was so physically ill and, and my marriage was like suffering. Um, you know, it, I wasn't even making that much money, but I, just, I decided, uh, you know, I need to get away. I just need to go somewhere. So I went to Hawaii and when I went to Hawaii, it was the first time I went somewhere where I, I decided to go because I felt the inner calling to go. 
Like everywhere I traveled, there's always because of a circumstance or a friend or something that, that led me there. But this time I decided to go and I went for a month, turned into a six month vacation. Uh, but I'm not sure if it was really a vacation. It was more of like a retreat for me. Um, but how I got to this, the, the point is that I got to uh, this stage where I, I had to look at um, this value of integrity. Um, so the backstory is that one thing that would um, trigger me was when other people were not being uh, honest. And, and I would be so upset about it, though, like, you know, really upset. So I had to look at myself and go, okay, how am I not being honest? In, in what situation am I not being honest? And where do I not have integrity? And I looked at, you know, you know, uh, all my different relationships and, you know, circumstances. I'm like, no, I, I feel like I'm a pretty, you know, honest person in all my dealings. And then it literally, I was so stuck on this that, that two or three days later, it dawned on me. And I realized I was not being honest with myself. And that was such a huge thing where I literally got emotional. I was like, that's it. Right. <sighs> that was, that was huge. So I decided to, to honor myself and, and go to Hawaii because I felt like that's what I need to do. And when I went there, something shifted. Uh, like I said, I ended up being in Hawaii for four months, did a bunch of inner work there, met a bunch of people. I made more friends there in four months than I did in living in Vancouver in 10 years. This is how much I opened up. I by honoring learning. yourself. By honoring yes. yourself. That's right. It by was that aha. It was that aha that you had, that inner aha where that that was a huge paradigm shift and then everything shifted from there that's right because by honoring myself it led to obviously the whole path of that was respecting myself liking myself loving myself right which goes back to what with this this whole long story was about but but yeah um allowing that uh, uh that that to happen really and, and just you know loving myself again and that kind of came from an act an act of, you know, self-respect. Um, and, and, and that was huge. So what happened there since then was incredible because, um, like I said, I, I was gone for six months. And when I came back, everything shifted. My relationships got better. Financially, things got better. Like I, I made $150,000 in six months. Wow. Back. And, and that wow. was like not even planned. But that's just, it's not about, again, it's not about the money and stuff like that. But what I'm saying is that I had zero income, nothing before. Right. And, and so what I mean is every aspect of my life, from my health to my relationships to my career, something just shifted. And when that shift happens, it doesn't affect one area of your life. It's like holographic. Every, every staging area of life is affected immediately because of that healing. And that healing has to come from, again, it's the core, right? That core work because all those elements, um, expressions of our life are just kind of branches from that, from those roots. And, um, so again, yeah, once, once that healing happened, I was able to actually, you know, love myself and, and, and flip that, you know, self hate, that self doubt into love and appreciation. Then I was able to um, go out and expand it. And, and ever since, you know, yeah, my life has just shifted. So going back, looking at where I came from, I'm like, holy cow, so much has happened. Um, and it can happen in such a short period of time. This whole idea of like, oh, you know, uh, my life, you know, I, it took years to get this way. It's going to take years to go back. That's that's not true. It can happen. That shift can happen like right now. It's a huge paradigm shift. And once that happens, things get cleared and boom, it's magic. It's awesome. It is. And that's what makes you qualified now to help other people because this is one of your passions. I know that you love, you're an amazing coach. You're You're amazing at helping other people uncover uh dark parts of their soul why because you've been there you know what it's like and you have this gift that you're now giving back i want to tell the listeners how they can get in contact with you steve so they're listening to the cornelia stephanie show and they can get in contact with you steve at well i just put up a website um it's called adventure tribe dot life and my whole intention with this is to really just share and um, cause I don't want to come from a point of view of like, here's what I have to teach you. No, it's like, here's my journey and I've learned so much. And this is so amazing that I want to take friends. I want to take people. I want people to experience what I, what I've experienced in this healing and how that can shift, you know, people's lives. Um, so it was all about context. So the reason why I created adventure tribe 
was to be able to take uh, a group of people and go on an adventure retreat, you know, where we're away from distractions in our day-to-day lives with a supportive group of people in this bubble, this container, right? Where we do this work, but we do it through great activities, you know, um, physical activities, because I really believe in holistic healing, you know, absolutely. It's, 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 you know, especially for men, really, it's like by doing some physical activity, it opens us up, right? While women can sit together in a circle and hold space for each other, guys tend to bond in different ways. And in order to create that brotherhood, a lot of times we're, we're doing activities, you know, really cool, fun things, you know, whether it's in the ocean, in the air, um, doing martial arts, things like that. And then implementing that with this emotional healing where, where guys can learn how to be vulnerable without feeling like they're losing their sense of masculinity, right? Because that's why I feel men are so resistant in working with the feminine energy. They think feminine energy is for women. Feminine energy for men is weak. Um, They don't understand. So it's all about changing that perception and realizing, no, we all have a mix of masculine and feminine. It's about about harmonizing that together. So, um, you know, going on these retreats in exotic locations, you know, whether it's Bali or Hawaii, um, and, and to be able to do this healing and inner work together as we're exploring, we're really exploring ourselves. Yeah. What's the name of your website? Adventuretribe.life. And if you want to email me, I, you know, feel free to email me. My email is steve at adventuretribe.life. I love that you just put this up yesterday. I mean, literally, we're creating our lives right now as we go. Don't you agree? After shedding so much of the old skin, old conditioning, totally being led from our hearts, honoring ourselves, that takes time to evolve. And we don't have it all figured out. It's not all perfect. It's being created as we go. We're creating our new world as we go. And I say that we that we do it uh, based on our core values, our core principles, and we model that way of living. We model the authentic human. We model the uh, the empowered human. We we make choices that are that are based on our core values that are in harmony with our true nature. That's how we're taking care of this planet. That's our responsibility, right? So I want to t- tell people about my book, Peace: The Flip Side to Anger how I healed my life, my emotions, and my body, and how you can too. You can, you can get this book on Amazon. What's great about this book is that it has everything in there that you need, all the basics, the emotions piece, the how to change your beliefs, how to process and transcend fear, and it's it's all in there. It's, it's, it's a, a book that every life coach, every healer, every holistic practitioner should have access to because we talk about, I talk about in the book, how to not take action on your emotions, because that's what humans do. They act on their emotions, whether they shoot somebody, whether they go gamble, whether they overeat, whatever it is that they do, when they're coming from a lower emotional place that hasn't been healed, people act on their emotions, whether it is a saboteur that's coming up for uh, re- review or whatever it is. And as you and I both know, emotional processing is so important to learn how to dive deep into the waters because really there's nothing broken within us. There's nothing that needs to be fixed we just need to undo. We just need to undo and shed the skin and now create the lives that we were meant to live. The old world is clearly dying. It's clearly falling apart. It's clearly dying. The, the people that have empowered themselves, that are uh, in harmony with, within themselves, that have looked at, who am I? Who am I? From the, from the depth of their soul, whether you know the answer to that or not, it, it doesn't matter because it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing journey to continue on asking, who am I? Because we don't want to identify with any, anything out, outside that, that isn't as true to our organic nature, because again, that becomes limiting. And so it's important that we continuously keep looking at 
who it is that we are. I have so much respect for you, and I so much love what you're doing with your adventure tribe. But I want to talk a little bit now about your life as a stuntman. Uh, so what is that about? Tell, tell us about that. I mean, in Hollywood, tell us, give us a little backstory on that. Um, yeah, I, before I go into that, I would, I would say that in order to know ourselves, um, it's all about understanding the language of, of emotions. And as you were mentioning about the importance of understanding emotional processing, um, I think what I call emotional literacy is something that we all need to learn on uh, the language of emotions. So going back into stunts, it's like, I think what got me into that was I've, I've always been a very physical person, uh, you know, loving martial arts and ad adventure, uh, things like that. And after losing my first business, um, I got back into teaching martial arts, but then knew that it, that wasn't a career path for me. It was more of a lifestyle as far as martial arts practice. So the appeal for stunts for me was really that this way of expressing myself physically, because again, growing up, I didn't know how to express myself in, in words or, or art or anything like that. For me, it was through physical activity. And it was a way for me to take my background as a, a former Marine and martial artist into a field where I can actually do this, have fun doing it, and, you know, make some money doing it as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I think what I love about being a stunt performer is that it's different every day. Um, you know, whether we're dressed up as a pirate or a, a hoodlum or whatever, it's all, it's all play and it becomes a way of creative expression. And, again, the appeal is that, you know, we're, we're – the challenge is that it, it forces you to be present. And this is where um, I used to live in a world where I was hardly ever present. I was thinking about the past, fearful of what could be, right? But when you're doing stunts, you have to be absolutely present. And when you're focused on the now, uh, that little voice goes away. That inner critic goes away. And all of a sudden, it's all about um, observing and feeling uh and it becomes very intuitive and this is how we get into the flow state and there's magic in the flow state because that's where our inner creativity expresses itself um because the mind doesn't get in the way and again it's it's that thing where you know if the mind is running your life uh it can be a disaster and so it's, it's meant to be a tool and this is a way where yeah i can i remember one one stunt i was doing i was supposed to um crash through some glass and then fall through a window at it was supposed to be about 60 feet from a six-story building or something and um i didn't get to rehearse there's no time to you know to to practice or anything and all of a sudden i had to go through this glass face first because that's what the director wanted you know and this is a thick glass that's nine feet high probably weighs more than i i weigh and you know doing doing a fall and i remember just like okay um not letting the fear set in and that's another thing. It's like fear sets in the more you think about it. Uh -huh. um, so this aspect of, of doing stunt work, as I think, you know, what appeals to me is because it it puts me in situations where uh, I, I I need to be in the flow, which means I need to be present. And uh, I just love it. And, and again, there's um, there's so many great things about it because we're, we're doing different things every day. We're, uh, you know, having to put our trust into somebody and – also knowing or letting that person know that, you know, they can trust us uh, because, you know, it can be dangerous sometimes, right? Even simple things like doing a fight scene, you know, um, I've had my nose broken, you know, doing, doing a fight rehearsal. So, um, yeah. And, and again, that's, although I, I do love performing as a stuntman, um, it's great. At the same time, I know that I have uh, a bigger calling. I feel this, like uh, this, this sense of um, doing something more. And that's why Adventure Tribe was born um, because taking my experiences, you know, loving adventure and, and stunt work into and sharing that with other people. Uh, so, yeah. That's, that's so awesome. So a couple things came to me um, while you were talking is that when you organize your first tribe retreat, um, I want you to let me know when that is. And I want to be able to help you, uh, you know, get the word out. And th so that's, that's one thing. The other thing is that I know I want you to come back and do another show 
and maybe even another show and uh, maybe another show. I, I just, I, I just love, I love what you're doing and I love, I love our journey. I, I love who you are because you are such a great example of what, what it means to be, to, to be living your life on purpose with your presence, your amazing spiritual insight and gifts that you have to share with people. So it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. And it's an honor. It's an honor. It's such an honor for me to have you here. Thank you. It's, it's my yes. pleasure. Um, I'm very grateful for you. And uh, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> and, um, and now I want to talk a little bit about, um, so, oh, I, another question I had. Uh, do you, do you see any of the actor, I mean, like famous people, do you see famous people all the time? Is this part of your, you see famous people? All the yeah, time. I, I work with them. And uh, it, for me, it's, I, I don't really get starstruck. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, it's just, uh, I keep it very professional. Um, there are times where I see an, you know, an actor um, or an actress and like, oh, you know, it, it's, it's really cool. Uh, and I probably should take a lot more pictures. That's something my wife bugs me about. I just don't take enough pictures, probably because it's unprofessional. I'm not supposed to, but um, yeah, it'd be great to document some of that. Uh, it's, it's funny because, because I've done so much of my own work, I really see other people's pain. Um, and I understand, I can see their social masks, especially being in Hollywood, very superficial industry, you know, and at times very toxic. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're having fun playing make believe, but at the end of the day, um, it's, it's a very superficial business. You know. That's why you're there, Steve. That's why you're there. You're there to bring that light. You're there to anchor that truth. You're there to show what it looks like uh, being a man, a masculine, empowered, that has a core of worth and value. Because you know what it, you can be around millionaires and you can be around uh, these people that have these masks and these incredible bank accounts and all of this and this status and all of that. And if you haven't done your own inner work, your unworthiness and all of that stuff would come to the surface very quickly because you would feel like you're not good enough to be in their presence, which is all the more reason, you know, of, of why the work that you did, this self-work has, um, has helped you to now be able to go there. And actually you're the anchor the anchor there you, that's that's one of the reasons why you're there to to show what it's like for for them and then hopefully at some point somebody's gonna know and see you and they're just gonna swoop you up and um have you help them with their inner work that that they need to do that right person is going to contact you just like the right person's going to contact me the, the people that really need this work and want want this help are, um, are are will be ready for it because really it's it's what we need to do we need to face those inner demons those those inner and take the walls down so that we can stand naked that we can stand raw that we can stand vulnerable with our hearts wide open there's nothing to fear because we're here to rise together. We're here to shine. We're here to live. We're here to enjoy. We're here to create a new world, but we can only do it from a place of love. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I thank you for those kind of words. And um, I know, and I can feel the difference in how inter I interact with people because I I'm, I feel so much more centered and grounded because of, of my journey. And um, yeah, definitely. And, and being able to, especially when, as a stunt performer, when you're on camera, the camera picks up um, your confidence or lack thereof, and it's very apparent. So, but it becomes less of a performance for me, knowing that this is just me. Right. I, I can I can really be myself. And that definitely helps other people who um, need that energy to kind of feed off of. Right. Um, it, it's I don't know why, but I just thought of, uh, you know, how animals can pick up people's energy like 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 a, a dog can sense someone's energy. And, you know, the more centered someone is, the more calm 
and relaxed uh, uh, the dog is. You know, it's like it's when when a dog is like being really frantic and stuff like that. It's not really about the dog <laughs> because dogs are like pack animals. They they kind of um, you know uh, look for that the you know the the pack leader or whatever and and the only reason i mentioned that is because i know when when i'm in a situation and i'm a bunch I'm, and i'm around a bunch of people that are uh frantic it, it it feels very unsettling you know um at the opposite you know and it's like when you're around a bunch of people that are very centered and calm within themselves it's it, like a lot of magic can happen you know and and taking that into the context of uh motion picture and film um, it's a totally different environment you know, instead of having the, uh, the, what do you call the, the, the yelling frantic director, you know, and everyone's like stressed out, uh, you have a very fun, creative experience, you know, and we're making movies, having fun. Um, so yeah, but at the end of the day, it, it's, it comes down to our, our own, um, level of emotional literacy, I guess you can say, and just, yeah. And, and Whatever situation it's in, whether we're making movies or in a relationship um, or whatever we do for work, I, I think, you know, how we find our surroundings is really a reflection of what's going on inside. Um, yeah, so I think it's, it's, it's all great. And just like you said, we're creating, we're creating our lives, we're creating, the, you know, the, the world, the, the, the new world, the universe. And, um, you know, um, coming from a place of love is important. And when we have that, you know, um, empowerment owning ourselves that then it becomes great and it becomes fun and exciting rather than um something that we want to avoid that becomes scary yeah you know um i can only imagine like seeing you like you know i had a visual when you were describing uh the chaotic scene and and the energy the presence that you bring the confidence that you have of what that looks like. And it's, it's, it, you, you are a very powerful presence. And I can see that that's exactly why you're there to, to, to anchor that light, to bring that confidence, to bring that professionalism, to bring the spiritually rooted warrior that is totally for the earth, not for the money, but also for the money, because it's about, it's about all of us um, who want to embrace our inner millionaire uh which is also all part of that we deserve we absolutely deserve to have the inner riches and the outer riches match that vibration and live that life because when we have the money to um support grassroots projects that we're passionate about and help the less fortunate that's really what it's about because we know what it's like to live simple to live with nothing we know what it's like um, to to have ha, have had no money, and moving from that place to a place of the new millionaires being born now. That's what my last retreat was about. Is just a couple weeks ago is seeding that millionaire, those millionaire babies that are being born now in the new world, right? And but coming from a place of true empowerment and. Uh, being responsible of what not to do with our money, educating people about what to do with their money so that we're responsible people, just like we have to be responsible with how we take care of the earth. So it, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of dedication, it takes the uh, expression of the, the balanced masculine, the balanced feminine coming forward, standing in their truth in full self-acceptance. That's the other thing that I see is the self-acceptance that you have now, total 100% self-acceptance. And that's also what you're bringing to Hollywood. I'm so glad you're there. Oh my God. <laughs> it's just awesome. Thank you, Cornelia. It's, um, it's, it's been an awesome journey and it, it continues and life is an adventure. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tell us again, we have two minutes left. Tell us again about how people can get in contact with you and how they can follow you or connect with you, how they can find you. Yeah, you can find me and connect with me on adventuretribe.life. And um, yeah, send me a message. Uh, email. Me there. My email, steve at adventuretribe.life. Good. And so, Steve, what's your uh, favorite quote? 
Wow, I have a lot, but the, the one that comes to mind is change is the essence of life. Be willing to surrender what you are for what you could become. Um, I love that. Love that. I think uh, you know a lot of us can be resistant to change. Uh, however, let's flow with it because that's how we grow. That's how we expand. Let's flow with it, which means which means you're totally in your feminine. Yeah. Yeah. You're totally in your feminine uh, flowing and you are a masculine that has taken stepped into his full masculine power in flow with the feminine, having that inner marriage take place and now bringing that to Hollywood. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. 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 So um, let's see what what's next for you, Steve. What are you what are you doing next week? What's going on in, in Hollywood next week? Uh, well, I'm going to Montana uh -huh. to work on a new show um, with Kevin Costner, and that's kind of all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. A new show with Kevin Costner. Wow. Yeah. That's exciting. Well, it's it's an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Would you would you do me the honor and come back again? Sure. Absolutely. Love sure. to. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here, Steve. And I want to tell the listeners that if they want to uh, work with me privately, they can contact me at radio at corneliastephanie.com. Send me an email there or go to my website at corneliastephanie.com. And so it's been a pleasure and an honor to have you. Thank you so much for this open, honest, transparent communication. I, I love you, Steve. Thank you, Cornelia. Love you too. Say hi to Lisa. Will do. Love you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.